Dá dois minutos aí, calma aí. Ah, é isso mesmo. É que parece muito maior, velho. O fogo é símbolo de vitalidade e sobrevivência ao mesmo tempo que representa a mortalidade e o descontrole em Game of Thrones. O elemento tem em Daenerys o seu principal representante, mas ele vai muito além disso, se tornando quase que um personagem na série. Neste episódio do nosso especial, nós vamos mostrar como o fogo representa e modifica a magia, o romance e a política em Game of Thrones. To understand the pyromancers, you have to go back once again to uh, Valeria and the Targaryens. Uh, The Valerians were sorcerers. They practiced blood magic, they practiced fire magic. They tamed and rode and deployed in war dragons. But Valeria was destroyed. And then the only surviving dragons were the Targaryen dragons. And even they died out. De geração em geração, os Targaryen passam séculos ininterruptos no trono de ferro de Westeros. No entanto, o suposto sequestro de Lyanna Stark pelo príncipe Rhaegar Targaryen em Harren Hall levou à insurgência da rebelião de Robert, que culminou no assassinato do Rei Louco e a coroação do próprio Robert Baratheon. Só que antes de ser encurralado pelas tropas de Tywin Lannister e morto pelo seu cavaleiro Jaime Lannister, Aerys exilou a sua irmã e esposa Raela, grávida de Daenerys e seu filho Viserys, o que evitou a extinção completa do sobrenome Targaryen. Recaiu sobre os ombros da Mãe dos Dragões, a única sobrevivente da casa depois da morte do seu irmão, a responsabilidade de manter a tradição da família. Mas afinal, o que significa ser um Targaryen? Eu sou Daenerys Stormborn, da House Targaryen. Eu sou a Dragon's Daughter, e eu sweat a você que aqueles que te you vão morrer screaming. Targaryen, also known as the Mad King. She and her older brother, Viserys, were spirited away after Robert's rebellion. They are the blood of the dragon, and they conquered Westeros with dragons, which they could ride and command. She has been on the run since she was a baby. She's never known her homeland. All she really knows about it is from the stories her brother told her. Viserys Targaryen is the true king of Westeros, and he's been in exile his whole life, and he's trying to get back to where he feels he belongs. And he will do pretty much whatever that takes. I want to go home. So do I. We go home with Khal Drogo's army. I would let his whole tribe fuck you. All 40,000 men and their horses too, if that's what it took. A casa Targaryen é simbolizada por um dragão de três cabeças e tem como lema fogo e sangue. A representação evoca destruição, poder e violência. Como disse Sir Barristan Selmy para Daenerys no livro A Tormenta das Espadas, toda vez que um Targaryen nasce, os deuses jogam uma moeda para o alto e o mundo segura a respiração para ver de qual lado a moeda vai cair, da loucura ou da grandeza. E por enquanto, Daenerys parece estar no lado da dualidade que é positivo, o da grandeza. 
My brother's plan to take back the Iron Throne was to try and marry me off to a warlord who has an army. My brother thinks, as is kind of unwritten in law, you marry off to appropriate people who have money, armies, land, whatever. Once it's in the family, it's yours. She's being traded to the Dothraki in exchange for the Dothraki's military services and capturing back the Iron Throne. Dragon's eggs, Daenerys. The ages have turned them to stone, but they will always be beautiful. The idea of this scene is that Danny got these dragon eggs as a, a wedding gift, a very thoughtful wedding gift, but basically something that uh, they were supposed to be ornaments. They were supposed to be fossilized, dead things or fakes, or nobody knows what they're supposed to be, but they're symbolic of her heritage that she's trying to regain. In the scene, it's probably a moment of awe and wonder. Danny herself don't think she knew necessarily that this was what was going to come. When she walked into that pyre, this was how she was going to come out of it but this is the place where a, a new piece is put on the board in a very powerful way. Danny was in a much more somber place than where we left in the end of season one. So I took it upon myself to send my Dothraki off to try and find a place that we could try and survive. The one Dothraki that did come back came back with tales of a paradise in the middle of the desert that was intrigued by the idea of dragons. Welcome to Karth, my lady. And so she's in Karth and she is tested over and over again. I admire your passion. But in business, I trust in logic, not passion. I am Daenerys Stormborn of the blood of old Valyria, and I will take what is mine. With fire and blood, I will take it. Yes, my lady, but not with my ships. This whole season is really the season where Danny learns the lesson of self-reliance. It's a very painful lesson for her to learn. I mean, she's, she's lost all of her people, she's lost her husband, she's lost her blood riders. She couldn't trust anyone. The Carthine people only wanted one thing, and that was my dragons. It's a pretty horrific, bloody scene that I return to, and the dragons are gone. Where? Dragons! The plan all along was Pietri and Zarazan and Doxos would steal my dragons and rule. If my dragons are in the house of the Undying, then take me there. That's what the warlock wants. If you enter that place, you will never leave again. This magic is strong. And what of my magic? For most of the season, she's been looking for help from others. And by the end of the season, she realizes that she has to do it herself. She's got to help herself and that she's she can't ask others to um, give her power, she's got to take it. You know, the only way to conquer anything is through destruction. And, and I think by the end of the second season, you're seeing her really start to come into her own as the mother of dragons and uh, the last of the Targaryens. Welcome home, Daenerys Stormborn. Dracarys. of chains. She broke her own chains first. There you go. Dracarys é uma palavra em alto valeriano que significa fogo do dragão. Daenerys ensina os dragões a cuspirem fogo ao ouvirem a palavra. Drogon, seu dragão mais agressivo, já queimou senhores de escravos, soldados, frotas de navios e executou dois membros da família Tarly sobre o comando da rainha. The dragons coming into the world has opened up an entirely new set of possibilities for Danny, but they've also exposed her 
and, and other people as well to a whole new world of, of dangers. O fogo também tem na Melisandre uma grande representante. No começo da série, era tida como uma bruxa meio misteriosa que a gente não sabia direito o que queria. Inclusive, ela achava que o Stannis Baratheon era a reencarnação do Azor Ahai e para isso fez vários sacrifícios que mudaram a trajetória de boa parte das famílias em Westeros. Mas desde que ela veio para cá, para o norte de Westeros e lá em Castle Black conseguiu ressuscitar o Jon Snow, ela colocou mais dúvidas ainda na cabeça de todos os fãs da série. Qual será o real objetivo dessa personagem? Alessandra is a character who arrives in season two. She believes in other gods. She believes Stannis to be a savior figure, the son of fire who was meant to come and save the world from the, the darkness that is uh, encroaching upon it. All you men were named in the light of the seven. Is this how you treat the gods of your fathers? With the exception of Melisandre, all the people there witnessing the burning of the idols grew up with the religion of the Seven, and now they're turning their backs on that. It's quite a big thing to burn all these idols, to burn their religion down and saying, you were all wrong, there's only one God, and that's the Lord of Light. Do you want to stop me? Much as it is in the monotheistic religions in our world, these are idols, and, and idol worship is you know, what primitive people do. From her point of view, she's trying to show them the light. You should kneel before your brother. He's the Lord's chosen. Look to your sins, Lord Renly. The night is dark and full of terrors. Events take a, a sudden turn when Catelyn is in the tent trying to talk to Renly. Once Stannis makes a decision, he never changes his mind. The only way is forward, and Melisandre presents him with a with an opportunity. He's seen her powers before. She promises him there's one chance left, and that's if we burn Shireen, and that will allow the Lord of Light to set you free on your path to Winterfell. When George first told us about this, it was one of those moments where I remember looking at Dan, it was just like, oh, that's so, it's so, so horrible and it's so good in a story sense because it all comes together. You know, from the beginning, from the very first time we saw Stannis and Melisandre, um, they were sacrificing people, they were burning people alive, and it all leads ultimately, fatally, to Shireen's sacrifice. And it's one of the most horrible moments we've shot just in terms of the emotion of it. Where's my father? I want to see my father! It will all be over soon, princess. <laughs> Let me see my father! Where are you, please? Father, don't do this! Please! Mother, no! Please! Nem sempre o fogo em Game of Thrones é aquele vermelho escarlate que nós conhecemos. Na verdade, o primeiro grande acontecimento da série com este elemento veio na cor verde e aconteceu aqui, ó, nessa baía onde nós estamos em Dubrovnik, na Croácia. E foi onde rolou a Batalha de Água Negra, um dos primeiros grandes acontecimentos da série e que começou a mostrar como que Game of Thrones ia mudar a televisão. Take care, my lord. The substance burns so hot, it melts wood, stone, even steel. And, of course, flesh. The substance burns so hot, it melts flesh. So the pyromancers are a group of would-be sorcerers who are attempting to, to recreate fire magic with, with spells and also with alchemy, with mixing things. They have not uh, succeeded to the extent that the Valerians did, but they have succeeded to a certain extent in creating what they call the substance and what the rest of the world calls wildfire. Within this guild of pyromancers, they keep the uh, secret of it, of making it very, very private, very secret. Only, 
only their own acolytes and, and eventual masters know how to make wildfire. The jars are put in catapults and flung at the enemy. How much do you have? If our present count stands at 7,811, enough to burn Stannis Baratheon's fleet and armies both. You won't be making wildfire for my sister any longer. You'll be making it for me. I think what's really interesting about Tyrion in the season is that you see him kind of emerging from some of that selfishness. You really see him wanting to be a, a good leader, a good politician, a good uh, high-ranking member of this government. You know, whether it's Varys or, or Cersei or um, you know any of the kind of leading lights of, of King's Landing, he's they might not like him, but but he's impressed almost everyone with his abilities. Men, they say I'm half a man. But what does that make the lot of you? Don't fight for your king. And don't fight for his kingdoms. Don't fight for honor. Don't fight for glory. Don't fight for riches because he won't get any. This is your city Stannis means to sack. That's your gate he's ramming. If he gets in, it will be your houses he burns. Your gold he steals. Your women he will rape. Our brave men knocking at our door. Let's go kill them! At that point in the battle, Tyrion sees that there's no choice, you know, and desperate times call for desperate measures. He's he's the only person who can lead the charge at this point. And Tyrion is not a warrior, but he's brave. It's a, in some ways a more admirable bravery because he's more afraid in some ways than anyone out there. There's a very subtle choice that Peter made in that scene, which deviates from the script, which I think was brilliant. When he actually played the moment, Peter says it twice. Once he says it under his breath to himself. I'll lead the attack. And you can see the look of shock on his face that he's actually made this decision. And then he says it again. I'll leave the attack! And I think that that choice is such a smart choice, and that choice is really at the, the crux of the question, which is, is Tyrion surprised by his own actions? And he's definitely surprised. He's not an action hero at all. At the same time, he does have this core of bravery there, and, and a realization that leaders have to step forward, so you might as well go out there and, and go out fighting. <laughs> The battle was obviously between a between a land army and a, and, a, and a battlement army. So you had one one army in a castle that was well held up and well fortified. Then you had a second army that they were forced on shore by obviously by the uh, by the, the green fire. So basically, what happened is that once you land, you were stuck with getting equipment and people on board or on, onto the land area. Then suddenly you were here with a fortification of a castle. So the equipment that we had this year were probably more arrows, a lot more arrows off the battlements on the Lannister end of it, which again, they used a lot of flaming arrows. So these would be slightly longer arrows to allow the draw size and to allow to have the attachment for, for the flame on it as well. I think this year has raised the bar, absolutely raised the bar to such a level. We know it's a TV at the end of the day, it's a TV we're shooting, but it's all film work. I'm used to doing film work all my life. This is no different, absolutely no different. It's as epic as any film that I've ever shot. We have such a such an array of action. It doesn't devalue from any movie that I've ever shot on, so it's exactly the same way. Stannis Baratheon feels he is entitled to the throne. So Stannis comes and Tyrion has handed the king to a king that's not fit to be king, has to take the reins all himself. If I tell the hand to cut you in half, you'll do without a second thought. That would make me the quarterman. Just doesn't have the same ring to it. Basically, the person that nobody believed could lead any sort of warfare does so very successfully. There they are. Archers to the marks. Archers! 
to your box! Knock your arrows! Knock arrows! Hold fast! Hold fast! What are you doing? We need to attack them! Hold fast! There's no one on board. Wildfire. Half the men that arrive on shore are burning. That's the one fear of the hound. He doesn't do fire. You know, it only takes one burning man running towards you. When the hound comes back in from fighting, he abandons the king. When it looks like the battle is lost, Sansa flees back to her room, and the hound finds her there. The hound who's now disgraced because he, he could not face the fire again, and he, he's this great fearsome warrior. That's his whole identity. He's the hound. He's, he's one of the most terrible and deadly knights in the realm, and his place was taken by a dwarf. His army, his men were led by a dwarf because he didn't have the courage to leave them out into the fires again. So he's lost everything, essentially. He's lost his place with the Lannisters. He's lost his identity, and he seeks out Sansa. And we don't know in that moment in Sansa's bedroom whether he's going to kill her or rape her or protect her or whatever. And I think it's a very charged scene. And... Uh, probably my favorite scene in the whole Battle of the Blackwater sequence that I, as I wrote it in the books. Your King's Guard, Clegane. We must beat them back or they're going to take this city. Your King's city. Fuck the King's Guard. Fuck the city. Fuck the King. those out there who saw what Tyrion did, um, but many more did not, you know, and, and went from being the, you know, acting as the hand of the king to lying in a, in a bloody bed in a small dank chamber somewhere in the bowels of the Red Keep, you know, he, he's, his position has plummeted greatly um, in just in the time that he was unconscious. And, you know, to make matters worse, he's uh, being tended to by a man who he threw into a dungeon cell not that long ago, and, and uh, things have gotten pretty bad pretty quickly for Tyrion. And so unjustly, because of course, you know, if it weren't for Tyrion, the city would have fallen. I mean, he really saved the day, and not only was he not rewarded for that, he was punished for that. There are many who know that without you, this city faced certain defeat. The king won't give you any honors. The histories won't mention you. But we will not forget. A lot far braver people have uh, have died, been killed, and he still survived. So I, I, I give him credit for that, being a survivor. He's a true survivor. Boa parte dos personagens em Game of Thrones seguem um processo de culpa, castigo e redenção. E talvez o principal representante disso tudo seja o Jaime Lannister. Ele está no foco do nosso próximo episódio deste especial de Game of Thrones. You think you're the smartest man there is? <laughs> Yeah, this should help you remember. Olha aí, uma novidade para quem é claro pós. Se você já é um net e tem HBO, pode maratonar as sete temporadas pelo aplicativo do Now, sem descontar nenhuma internet do seu celular.